Hello everyone, today we've got a follow up on our previous product configurator video on revenue lifecycle management. In the first video, we looked at creating custom configurator flow and how we can assign it to different products. Today, we're gonna to take a slightly different approach and see how flexible the product configurator is to allow a use case that's not currently possible in RLM usage-based products. Let's go and have a look in Salesforce first. All right, so I already have a demo quote set up for us. I have the product with that custom configurator already enabled on, so I've got full self-driving paper miles option product on there. So if I wanna use the configuration option to see how we can set up usage-based products. On the right-hand side, I'll go to configure and the configuration screen is gonna come up. We're gonna see a couple different things. So it doesn't look like the usual configuration screen because we've customized the flow for this one. We've got minimum usage input field. So that's a simple number field where we can input the minimum usage. We can hit save to save that minimum usage. Plus, we've got the different consumption rates for that product. So we've got the lower bound, upper bound, and the different rates. All of this can be updated within our screen flow. Once I modify it, I can hit save. If I'm done with my configuration, I hit save and exit. I'm taken back to the transaction line editor, and all my changes are updated on there. All right, so how are we able to accomplish this? All right, so a couple things that we had to set up before getting to that flow is we created a consumption rates object under the product that has the rate, lower bound, upper bound, and a look up to product, a matching object under quote line to hold the rate, lower bound, upper bound, and a look up to quote lines. And we also have a flow that runs on creation of quote lines to copy the consumption rates from product to quote line. We also have a Lightning Web Component data table to allow for the edits during configuration. Let's go back in Salesforce and look at the flow. All right, so here's the usage-based configuration flow that we created by cloning initially from the default configuration flow and how we modified it. First, the get quote line consumption rates that we added on there. So this is to get the quote line consumption rates created against the quote line when it gets added to your quote. So that's a simple, we're getting the objects that are related based on the quote line lookup that's on our object. And how we get the ID of the current quote line in that configuration flow is you've got variables that are available, configurator context and transaction line ID. So when you're on a quote, that's gonna be your quote line item for the current transaction. So we use this to retrieve all the consumption rates for that specific quote line item. And then on our product configuration screen, we modified this, cleaned it up, removed a couple of components that are there by default that weren't required for our use case. And then we added the quote line rates data table component on there. So this is a custom Lightning Web Component data table that allows you to modify and save the different rates for a given product Again, as an input, it takes the current quote line item ID from the transaction line ID and the record collection that we get in the previous get record. One important note that we realized during testing of this is because the product configuration uses a custom footer for the save and exit, it does not execute any steps that you would have after the screen in your configuration flow. So we initially tested with a couple different steps after the screen that would never get reached in the typical workflow. So that's why now our quote line rates data table, if we go back to our quote on the quote, go back to the configuration screen, as you probably saw earlier, both the minimum usage and the rates, we allow to save right away on modif modification, right? So the change changes are made right away to the database. We don't wait on save and exit because any actions that would happen after this are within the configuration. So while those this would be possible with code. We wanted to avoid it as much as possible. Yes, Lightning Web component itself, the component is code, but we wanna avoid any more if we can. So that's how we got to this. All right, so obviously if you really wanted to use this all the way for usage-based configuration, there would be a lot more steps to go, right? You would have to integrate this to a billing system that supports this. You would have to make sure that those get carried over also down to your order product. But really what we wanted to showcase here is the flexibility of the product configurator and what you can accomplish with mostly point and click configuration in this to extend the capabilities of RLM as they are today. All right, so this was the product configurator to set up usage-based products in revenue lifecycle management. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you've got any questions.